following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verana Media Network. A very good evening and thank you for joining with us on another episode on Gen XYZ and this is a program as you all know we talk about contemporary topics or issues focused on the youth per se. Now Sri Lanka has been you know going through a series of crises at the at a long time for a longer period of time and it's something that the country is going through right now and even on this program we have talking about the economic crisis for the past two weeks per se because I feel that this is important and these are problems that we should be talking about right now in order to find solutions and how people should cope with this at this time so now today on the show we are specifically going to concentrate on how the youth is going through at this time mentally physically emotionally the frustration that they're going through and how we are actually going to find solutions for their mental health problems so now to discuss on this topic we have a very special guest Leon Kirti Singh nice to meet you hi Shanali nice to meet you nice so Leon is a uh, the CEO of Leon K Coaching That's right. and also he's a life coach and also a success coach as well. So Leon Keith Singh, it's nice to meet you and also to share your ideas and advice on the youth per se. So start off our discussion Leon, now this huge problem we are facing right now, the youth is going through an immense amount of frustration because they know that you know their, their goals are not being met you know they're backtracking their lives and it's a lot of frustration to take in because they're not moving forward in life so what can the youth do in order to cope up with that frustration okay. so first and foremost thank you for having me Shnal. It, it has been a great sunny morning and we are picking up on a very interesting topic uh, well we all know we have to accept the current times are unprecedented times unforeseen situations a lot of changes a lot of chaos around um, and like you said, the Gen Z crowd especially uh, is quite affected in all this what is happening and it causes a lot of frustration. Uh, as a coach, when I work with a lot of people, I, I see similar patterns. And uh, one of the things that I always say is for you to achieve something or to face something successful, it's 80% mindset, 20% strategy. So frustration being an emotion, uh, when people are frustrated, I would say the best thing to do is first acknowledge that feeling and accept it. Because through acknowledgement and acceptance, we can actually face a lot of our emotions, right? Whether you are a Gen Z or not, doesn't matter. Anyone who is having strong emotions, especially in times like this, first thing what we need to do is we need to acknowledge that we are feeling like this. In this case, let's say we are feeling frustrated, we are feeling disappointed, we are feeling anxiety and then accept it, saying it's okay because we are human and as human we have a bowl of all kinds of different feelings and emotions that we have to deal with because if we don't do that, we are going to create resistance towards those feelings and emotions and it's going to create a lot of uh, it's, it's going to be difficult for us to face them. So the best way to face those strong emotions is first accept them, acknowledge them and say it's okay. And these feelings and emotions are there for us to, uh, as, a, as a warning sign, as a signal sometimes, to tell us that something is not right. And we already know that. But by acknowledging and accepting, we can actually come into a place of peace and serenity where we can find solutions because when our minds are full of chaos we will never find solutions yeah i would completely agree with you because most people are in denial they would not Absolutely. want to accept the fact that yes i am frustrated i am stressed out so they don't want to take actions because mental health is something that people really don't realize that their state is 
so now this frustration when it comes to you there are so many ways of letting out this frustration Absolutely. it could be violence it could be just bottling yourself feelings up and you know yes. suffering in silence what do you think is the most healthiest way for you to deal with your frustration Absolutely so with with these kind of emotions like you said there's a lot of stress that builds up right and uh, stress is not something that we can get away because stress is a part and parcel of life right and uh, the way i like to see is stress can be a good thing if you use it productively because through stress you can actually push yourself out of the comfort zone and start growing so in a time like this when stress starts building up you need to ask uh, ourselves what are those mechanisms that we have available at hand to overcome it and uh, my message to a lot of youngsters is uh, change your perspective rather than seeing this as uh, something bad that has happened if you start looking at it as an opportunity you can find enough and more ways to explore this situation and overcome your stress for an example let's say what if you use this time that you have in hand to explore a passion right so instead of being frustrated uh saying i am not in a position to do what i planned i am not in a position to uh continue my life the way i uh, thought it would continue now you are using the time that you have in hand or uh the situation in your benefit so i would say the answer is to find more ways to enjoy life and to make the best out of the situation now in coaching we have this thing called the buzz moments I help people to discover their buzz moments. Buzz moments are the things that they really love doing which makes them feel like the time have disappeared, right? So for a person who really loves reading and collecting knowledge, reading could be a buzz moment. Now for a guy like me, I really enjoy sketching and painting, right? Or coaching or helping someone. So each one of us have different buzz moments. So once you discover your buzz moments and start including it in your daily life, sometimes that stress seems to disappear because you end up spending time in doing the things that you love so once again how can you make this an opportunity and discover the things that you really enjoy doing passionately and integrate it into your life so rather than being stressed out of the uh, everything that is happening outside how can you use this as, a, as an opportunity to grow also another thing now when you're talking about these buzz moments and you're telling to live at the moment and yes. do something that you really like yes but how long are we supposed to live that way because i feel that that's a temporary thing yes because at the end of the day people want to be focused on their future goals and they Absolutely. want to be focused on their vision and work towards it yes but focusing on their buzz moments right now might not be the exact solution to achieve their goals in the future Absolutely. so what can you say about that so in terms of achieving goals i would say right now could be a speed bump but if you look at it shanali uh the world has always been like this there are uh, there may not have been a covid before yes. but there have been a lot of crisis situations that has happened in the past may it be war may it be uh, chaos like uh, protests or may it be economic crisis past is full of stories like this so the generations before has always faced these ups and downs right so it's all about building up that resilience uh and and finding a way to do what you like but like you said not to lose track of your vision so your vision needs to be constant but your plan is meant to change so in current uh crisis like this where the external environment is very chaotic we have to re-strategize we have to keep on changing plans but if you are focusing on your vision without change you still can get there maybe it's the timelines are going to change maybe you are going to hit your goals maybe one year later two year later but we should always remember that we shouldn't lose track of our vision so as long as you keep on looking at your vision right and planning and changing your plans fine tuning your plans to suit the external environment and the chaos around us we still can get there what happens most of the time is in times like this people lose hope and moment you lose hope you start losing your victory that's true something that i picked on is that you said that the generation before the gen z crowd were 
you know, Im immune to this mm -hmm. crisis, I would say. Okay. And you said that, you know, people have gone through this before. But right now, the youth, the Gen Z crowd, as you mentioned before our recording as well, that, you know, they have all of a all of a sudden been put into this spot. Yes. And, you know, it's difficult for them to absorb. So what is the best way for even to parents to handle this situation? Okay. So let me take this question in two parts, right? Uh, let's compare Gen Z versus millennials or baby boomers who have lived a couple of decades, right? So that crowd who could be in their 30s, 40s, 50s or 60s have spent three to six decades of their life. So they have experience quite more than the Gen Z crowd. Gen Z crowd is essentially people between the age of 10 and 25 as of now. Right? So having lived three decades, four decades, five or six decades, you know, like I said, the past has always had ups and downs, economic crisis, recessions, war, uh, then maybe pandemics of sort, right? So it has never been a smooth run. Now the elder crowd, because of that, I wouldn't say immune, but more resilient because they have a greater understanding that nothing goes according to plan. Right? Honestly speaking, if you look at life, nothing goes according to plan. But what happens is, uh, for the Gen Z crowd, their experience in life is very limited. Now only they are learning life. Maybe if when they come into 30s, 40s, 50s, they will have the same understanding through the experience of life. But now, the Gen Z crowd needs to start looking at it as an opportunity. It's like a fast-tracked MBA or a PhD that they have got in their life. Rather than having to wait until they're 30 or 40, they have to face the chaos outside. They have to face the uncertainties and learn few valuable lessons. Lessons like nothing goes according to plan. And when the external environment changes, you have to keep on becoming creative and fine-tuning your strategies and plans to face that. How do we advise the youth to open their eyes and look for the opportunities that they have in front of them? Because right now what we see is just a frustration, nothing is going according to plan, even if they try something, it's going haywire. So how do we help the youth to like focus on the opportunities they have? Right. So I would say when you, when you uh, look at the current situation and what, what the youth is going through, they always need to ask themselves one thing. Am I going to be a victim of the circumstances? Or am I going to be creative and find opportunity in chaos? Because there are enough and more opportunities to be a victim of the situation. Just ask a question like this, why is this happening to me? And just stay in bed the entire day and cry just because your plans are not going your way. You know, you, you can actually become a victim of your circumstances. But that is not going to get them anywhere. But if you start using this as an opportunity to find new ways to be creative, to change this so-called bad phase that we are going through can be an opportunity to thrive, can be an amazing opportunity to grow out of their comfort zones and, and create ways and means of improving their life, stuff that they wouldn't have done if everything was okay. So I always see this crisis as an opportunity. And I would say if the young generation also learns to see this as an opportunity, it's always a perspective change, right? So when you change the perspective, the problem can become an opportunity. Because, Shanali, you none of us can change what is happening in the macro environment. We all are victims to it. But are we going to stay as a victim or are we going to emerge as a victor is up to us. Now think of this. When COVID hit, a lot of businesses went down. But weren't there businesses that thrived in COVID? Weren't there entrepreneurs who saw the opportunity and started new things and actually made a lot of money during the pandemic? Now that comes by having a resilient mind which is open to change, open to chaos, where you have learned to find opportunity amidst chaos. Now as a coach, that's what I do with a lot of people as well. I help them to build a resilient mindset where they learn to find opportunity amidst this chaos and explore that opportunity and make the best out of it. Because all of us have that ability, but what happens is we get bogged down in our emotions exactly. when it hits us. Yes. And when we lose the emotional balance, 
we lose the ability to do things even the very same things that we are always good at doing that's the next question i wanted to ask clean like you said it's important to have a resilient mindset yes but it's very difficult to do so when your heart is telling something else yes it's always difficult to balance what your brain wants and what your heart wants and balancing emotions is very difficult what advice can you give to the youth in order to balance it should we listen to our heart or should we listen to our brain okay that's a very interesting question right now as a as a uh, as a life transformation coach my coaching when i coach people i coach them based on their personality type because based on the enneagram's personality uh, classification that i follow there are nine different personality types and each one of these people or each one of these personality types are very different so by and large this nine personality types are segregated into three sections one third uh, are more feeling full they operate out of feelings one third operate out of thoughts rational thinking and the other one third operates out of their gut right so there is no right way to say whether you should depend on your feelings your emotions your thoughts or rational thinking or your gut feeling but it's a balance of all these three. so depending on your personality type you can know what works best for you so let's say for an example if you are having a chat and i help you to discover your personality type i can tell you uh, shanali what works for you best is putting your heart first and your mind second and your gut third right but also i have to say you have to have a good balance of all these three so even as a coach when i teach people to how to make better decisions you know i have something called the decision making formula even that has a good balance between these three elements so you don't take decisions completely through your emotions you don't take decisions only looking at rational or looking at it intuitively but you use a good balance between all these three areas all right lee and i uh, before we continue our discussion let's go into a short commercial break you're watching gen xyz and we'll be back soon Welcome back to Gen X Y Z, and we are in discussion with Lian Kirti Singh, the life coach and also a business coach as well. And I think Lian, in the first segment, I want to pick up on where we stopped. You were talking about, you know, making decisions. You need to have a balance of your emotions, your mind, and also your gut. But right now, when we try to take a decision, you take a decision at this point, and by tomorrow, you have to change your decision because there are so many external factors. affecting our decision so we have to be extremely careful about the decisions that that we take in life because life is changing time is changing everything is not constant so how do we make the right choices which is suitable for us at the correct time okay that's a very good question shanali i i see decisions as one of the most important elements in life because one simple decision can change your life forever exactly right but yet no one teaches us how to make decisions that's exactly why i talk about this thing called the decision making formula which helps people to make better decisions so they have better results in their life uh one advice that i can give to the youth is to focus on your vision don't lose sight of your vision because if you know exactly what you want to achieve and your vision and you come to crossroads where you don't know which path to take always take the path that takes you one step closer to your vision right i always say that that's the simplest way to take decisions the other thing is uh we need to find our foundational values i call them baselines each one of us have very unique foundational values on which our life runs now if you know your baselines or your foundational values when you take a decision you can ask yourself are my decisions aligned with my foundational values or my baselines because if you take decisions aligned with your core values that's always a right decision because you will be able to live with the consequences because it's in line so i teach this thing called aligned decision making as well so it's it's very important people discover their foundational values or their core values and start taking decisions which satisfies them not conflicts them so you can always be at peace with the decisions that you are making so i think that's a great way to uh, look at how you make decisions always you know focus on uh, your vision and take the decision that takes you one step closer to it and also discover your foundational values and take decisions 
that helps you um, you know satisfy your foundational values or your baselines another thing Leon is that you know when we are taking decisions or when we are making plans we have a certain timeline set for us because people think okay in two years time I'm going to finish my degree in three to four years time I'm going to get married in four to five six years I'm going to be stable and having a, a stable job but right now time is not in the favor of the youth right now Absolutely. and they are backtracking so this frustration how can they cope up with that because they know that Tomorrow, I'm not going to achieve what I planned yesterday. How Absolutely. do we cope with that? So, I would say the answer to that is, once again, accept the reality. The reality is what you said. Nothing is going according to plan. But if we keep on creating more resistance, worrying about it, it's just going to create more frustration. Mm -hmm. And that frustration is going to take away that emotional resilience. And you're not going to be able to do what you can do as well. So. What the youth can ask is, okay, we are missing out on time, we are losing time, nothing is going according to plan, but what can I do with that time in hand? So either you cry about it and lose that time, or you do something very productive with that time. Now, what can you do with the time that you have in hand, right? I would say discover something that you are very passionate about. Use that time to learn a skill, volunteer and contribute to a cause or even do an internship. So actually you will realize, let's say starting your degree has got delayed by one year. So you have the choice of spending that one year doing absolutely nothing or adding value to your life using this as an opportunity, something that you have never done. Now I have one client working with me. He's using the time that he has in hand once again, like you said, you know, whatever he planned has not gone according to plan. He's using that time to learn more about creating a successful YouTube channel and monetizing it. And now the current time is you have so many opportunities, not just what our parents used to tell us, like becoming a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer or an architect, right? You have so many different careers that you can pick up. Becoming a YouTuber is one of them. I know a lot of people who are earning millions monetizing their channel because you are a passionate YouTuber. So this gentleman is actually using the time that he has to learn more about uh, doing a successful YouTube channel, uh, the type of content that you're generating and how to monetize it so he can make the most out of his time. So it could be any of these options, you know, doing something that you're passionate about, volunteering at an organization, finding an internship opportunity so you actually uh, learn more skills on how to work inside a corporate you know, then you can actually use that time that you feel like you're use, losing in a more productive way. And uh, just adding on to that, Leah, now when we make plans and when we set our visions, we have a certain path in mind to go in that particular path. But the thing is, we had to, the youth per se, had to change direction so many times. Absolutely. So we Sri Lankans, or I would say the majority, is very comfortable, you know, just sticking to their plan and, you know, being in their comfort zone per se. Absolutely. And that's being, um, restricting them from being in their comfort zone is again another frustration. So how do we cope with, you know, changing our comfort zones constantly? Right. So I think that comes with a greater understanding of what this comfort zone is. Comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing grows inside a comfort zone. Even Tony Robbins says, growth comes when you are out of your comfort zone, when you push yourself out of your comfort zone. Right. So being, having to, you know, push yourself out of the comfort zone, whether you like or not, is once again a blessing in disguise, an opportunity. Because like I said, during this entire time, the only way to survive through this chaos is change your perspective and start looking at it as an opportunity and a blessing in disguise and make the most out of it. Those who manage to do this will thrive and grow beyond what their imagination can take them because that's the only way to face chaos. So, once again, there's this famous quote saying, life begins at the end of the comfort zone, right? So anyone who's pushed and forced to go out of your comfort zone, trust me, it's a blessing in disguise. In my life personally, all the growth, all the learnings, every time I stepped up, that has come only through, 
you know stepping out of the comfort zone even if you go to a gym if you keep on you know lifting the same amount of weights that you are comfortable with, your muscles don't grow that's why your gym instructor pushes you and puts more weights even the even to a level that you cannot you know lift and gets you to pump iron so you build muscle right so your muscle also starts growing only when you push yourself out of the comfort zone life is just like that all these skills all the experience that you would gain to face life successfully will only come through when you push yourself out of the comfort zone but it's going to be very difficult then because everyone is set on achieving one specific goal in this direction and when you have to move away from a certain path like it's not timely also no? like within few days or within few weeks you have to change your path Absolutely. and people are scared to take that risk also because they have to um, make up their mindset to in achieving one one path but then again they have to shift into another and again they have to control their mindset and their emotions again and that's difficult is there any advice that you can give to the youth you know a way of handling this right so this emotional roller coaster in your question you yourself gave away the answer right it's all about the mindset and as a success coach when someone says they want to achieve something what i always say is it's 80% mindset 20% strategy and mindset requires you to develop a resilient mindset where you can achieve these things change your perspective change the way you look at things right start seeing opportunity amidst chaos and i think what the young crowd right now have to do is start learning those skills of changing your mindset uh changing your perspective looking at things positively uh not becoming a victim and start seeing this as a blessing in this guy so it, it it's go, it's not going to be easy i truly admit that it's not going to be easy because it's something that they are not used to doing but for those who learn how to do it change their mindset change their perspective and start seeing this as a blessing in disguise like i said earlier will start thriving do you think taking this risk is going to be worth it i would say the biggest rewards comes through the biggest risks right that's something that we learn in our business life as well but risk is a risk so if you can take a calculated risk a guided risk a mentored risk you know you can you can make the most out of it i think that's where people like mentors coaches uh counselors guidance comes into play so i think the young crowd rather than trying to figure it out themselves because they do not have the have about 20 30 years of life experience under their belt it's always good to listen to someone who has that experience that can come in the form of a successful relative who runs an organization it can come in the form of a coach it can come in the coach of a uh, counselor it can come in the form of a person who provides guidance to students or young adults but i would say get in that perspective from someone who has completed 30 40 years in life can give them a remarkable change in their perspective how do you think you know the guidance or the parents or teachers any elder out there could help youths to identify this risk because i feel that young people are feeling a little bit reluctant to talk to people about this because they feel that older people will not be able to understand them so how do you think that parents or elders could help in a way that they can be let the youth be comfortable in opening up to them absolutely so i think the the responsibility is in the elders uh they should not be judgmental they should look at the youth in a more empathetic way understanding where they are coming from because maybe if the baby boomers or the millennials had to go through this kind of chaos when they were in their you know 20s or in their teenage years it wouldn't have been easy it would could have been really difficult so we need to look at it from a very empathetic point of view and understand what they are going through or what the gen z is going through and see how we can help them the best right and i think for the gen z crowd they will find more relief if they turn to more trained professionals like a coach or a guidance counselor or a mentor because they are trained not to judge people but to hear them out understand what they want to achieve and guide them and mentor them by giving them the mindset and the skills 
sometimes when we try to talk to our friends or our family because they are involved with a lot of emotions you know sometimes we feel judged and we feel like closing up and not talking to them i think that's where where, where your question is coming yes. from so talking to a trained professional uh could be a good thing now as a success coach as much as i work with clients i give a lot of you know free opportunities to people to set up a call and have a chat with me to understand certain things and what options that is available for them so likewise i'm sure there are a lot of professionals out there who have created forums and opportunities for people to pick their brains and understand uh, and explore the opportunities that they have and i think that should be a, a great stepping stone for someone who's going through chaos like this how do you think that you know youth can motivate themselves right now because everyone is frustrated again and stressed at this moment how do we get that flair back in life to start something new or think differently okay good question if you ask why would a person lose their motivation why would a person lose their drive that's because you have lost hope and i would say hope is one of those things which is really powerful uh because moment you are hopeless you have lost your victory as long as you have hope you keep on trying because you believe that a favorable outcome or a positive outcome is there in the near future so the secret is not to lose hope so how do you not lose hope in chaotic time like this i personally have an ethos i believe that everything happens for the best and with that belief i always look at everything that happens as an opportunity and that helps me to be more hopeful so i think people need to ask themselves how can i be more hopeful or how can i not lose hope because like i said moment you lose hope you start getting demotivated you start getting distracted you start getting fed up of what you are doing and you already feel like you lost even when you have not lost and the person who has hope who ha- who believes will keep on trying and a result of trying is succeeding I'll give you one good example because we are talking about this topic of hope and belief, right? Now, if you take a person like Thomas Alva Edison who created the light bulb, stories say he tried thousand times before he succeeded. Right? Now, do you think if he did not have hope, or if he did not believe that outcome that he expected exists in the future, he would have kept on trying thousand times? If he did not believe, if he was hopeless, he would have tried. 10 20 times and given up right so what made him successful what made his name go into the books of history is because he had hope and he believed that outcome exist so my message to the youngsters is believe that success exist believe that happiness exist believe that the result that you dream and you desire exist because it does do not lose your hope because moment you lose hope you stop trying and that's Where failure begins. All right, thank you, Lian. Thank you so much for that thought. I believe, yeah, hope does play a big role. But before we continue with this discussion, let's go into a short commercial break. You're watching Chen X Y Z. Welcome back to Gen X Y Z, and we are in discussion with Lian Kirti Singh. And I think Lian, you in the first two segments we discuss a lot of interesting topics and how you know youth can tackle their mental and emotional stress as well. Something in the second segment that we touched upon was you know how elders react to these emotional st- stress of youngsters because it's not just the youth who's experiencing this stress; it's That's definitely right. the parents also because they are also. thinking how to keep their family fed what are they going to do about their sons or daughters future what's going to happen in 2 to 3 years time so they are also mentally stressed right now and i feel that is also affecting the youth absolutely and uh, what advice can you give to the parents you know what approach should they take in order to handle the youth in the right way okay so i would say first and foremost we have to acknowledge the fact that it's not a easy time and the parents are actually going through quite a lot right and uh, that will put pressure on them as well as that will create 
pressure on the children as well. So we have to really accept that because we there's no way of escaping that reality. But at the same time, we need to understand, uh, you know, parents, everything that they do, they are doing it out of sheer love for their children. And they are doing the best they can in their own way to show their love. But the thing is, as humans, we are not perfect. And so is our parents, right? So sometimes we always look at our parents like this, idle role models and we expect them to be perfect because we learn about life through them but I think from the Gen Z side or the youngster side we need to start looking at our parents very compassionately empathetically and realize that they are also just like us they are like everyone else they, they necessarily don't have to be perfect they have their own weaknesses as well but understanding everything that they are doing and how they are showing up and everything that they are trying to do is out of the love for them right so start building that relationship with parents rather than conflict because now you have selected to look at it from a very empathetical compassionate angle understanding their uh, you know motive that they truly love their children and this is the way they are showing it from parents angle I think parents also need to understand that the children does not have the same life experience that you have had so you are not actually comparing apples to apples when you are advising your children. You are expecting them to have an understanding that you gained from 30, 40, 50 years of experience. And it's not a surprise that your young children cannot understand this. Why? Because they will actually come into the full level of understanding that only by experience in life. But now in the current context, uh, the younger crowd have got this MBA or the PhD forced upon them, the life experience that they would have got in 30, 40 years. Now they have to learn everything within a short span of time facing this chaos. Like I said, there is opportunity to learn and grow. But I think both parents and children need to start looking at this very empathetically and compassionately, allowing room for ourselves to make those mistakes, to feel those emotions. Because like I said, no one is perfect. And these unprecedented times are really going to test our resilience, test our patience. So because we cannot change the external environment, the only way to successfully get through this is by understanding each other very well. So more in-depth communication, uh, clear communication, empathetic communication, creating a safe time or a safe place inside the home to openly talk about certain things where you don't judge your children or your parents or you don't you agree not to be judgmental about these discussions is going to be healthy i think one good technique for families is to create even a particular time in the week or a day where everyone sits around and talk without judgment you can actually give a theme and name that time you know i remember uh, there was this uh, TV program called the Red Table Talks, right? Where the family gets together, sit around and talk and anything that you talk during that hour is not judged. You can say anything because that's the time where you put out your true emotions and discuss. Maybe something that can really uh, help the bonding of the family and exchanging these ideas as well. That is important, really important, I would say, like the bonding of the family because then only you get comfortable to open up yourself and talk to people as well. But uh, something very important that you said was, Leanne, that, you know, you need to understand the other person before, you know, advising them or before telling them to take certain decisions. You need to understand where that other person is coming from, where that other person's goals or, you know, visions are. To do that, I feel that one person should understand themselves first and self-love themselves because it's always easy to play the blame game. Like we Sri Lankans are very famous for that and most of the people I feel they're blaming themselves even though it's not their fault. Oh no, I'm a person like this, it's all my fault. But how do you learn to love yourself in that manner? I think that's a brilliant question. Self-love is one of my favorite topics and a lot of people think self-love is selfishness. Let's get that one out first. Self-love is not selfishness. There's a very big difference between the two. Self-love is really loving yourself, uh, giving you what you really deserve and taking care of yourself, right? Even in the airplane, they say, put your oxygen mask on before you put it to someone else. So if you don't love yourself and start, you know, treating yourself better, you can't help others. 
right? And something that I do when I teach self-love to uh, people who work with me in coaching is to do simple activity, right? Select three things that you really love doing every day, right? It could be as simple as grabbing a coffee, something that you always do, but do it differently, right? So when you do these activities, do it with love, kindness and compassion to yourself and give it to yourself as a gift. Right? So the same activity that you do every day, you do it differently. And you tell yourself, I'm giving this to myself because I love it and because I deserve it. Three small activities every day and keep on upping your game. Start with simple things and do things that you really love. So it could be eating something that you really love, grabbing something that you really love at a cafe or uh, giving yourself uh, the permission to enjoy, do something, take yourself out for a movie, a meal, uh, go on a trip. And you keep on doing little, little things like that every day, but in a form of giving yourself a gift. Why? Because you love yourself and you deserve it. And you start noticing your, the love towards yourself and treating yourself, it starts snowballing. And you start really enjoying yourself. That's a great way to build self-love. All right, Leah, and I think now we are reaching our time limit as well. And I think the viewers out there got a very good understanding, especially the youth and the parents as well, in order to cope up with their emotional and mental stress. Again, thank you, Leon, for taking the time to join me and sharing your ideas with us. Absolutely. Absolute I hope pleasure. we could uh, see you soon again on another program. Until then, see you soon. Thank you very much and have, uh, thank you for having me here, Shanali. And that was our episode on uh, Gen XYZ. We will be back again next week with another topic or issue that basically affects the youth. And uh, just in case you couldn't watch us on air, you can always catch us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Stay safe and have a good night. And you just watch Gen XYZ.